Free thought is an epistemological viewpoint which holds that beliefs should not be formed on the basis of authority, tradition, revelation, or dogma, and that beliefs should instead be reached by other methods such as logic, reason, and empirical observation. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, a free thinker is a person who forms their own ideas and opinions rather than accepting those of other people, especially in religious teaching. In some contemporary thought in particular, free thought is strongly tied with rejection of traditional social or religious belief systems. Modern free thinkers consider free thought to be a natural freedom from all negative and elusive thoughts acquired from society. Among free thinkers, for a notion to be considered true it must be testable, verifiable, and logical. Many free thinkers tend to be humanists, who base morality on human needs and would find meaning in human compassion, social progress, art, personal happiness, love, and the furtherance of knowledge. Generally, free thinkers like to think for themselves, tend to be skeptical, respect critical thinking and reason, remain open to new concepts, and are sometimes proud of their own individuality. They would determine truth for themselves, based upon knowledge they gain, answers they receive, experiences they have and the balance they thus acquire. Free thinkers reject conformity for the sake of conformity, whereby they create their own beliefs by considering the way the world around them works and would possess the intellectual integrity and courage to think outside of accepted norms, which may or may not lead them to believe in some higher power. The term first came into use in the 17th century in order to refer to people who inquired into the basis of traditional beliefs which were often accepted unquestioningly. Today, free thinking is, most closely linked with deism, secularism, atheism, agnosticism, humanism, anti-clericalism, and religious critique. The Oxford English Dictionary defines free thinking as, the free exercise of reason in matters of religious belief, unrestrained by deference to authority, the adoption of the principles of a free thinker. Free thinkers hold that knowledge should be grounded in facts, scientific inquiry, and logic. The skeptical application of science implies freedom from the intellectually limiting effects of confirmation bias, cognitive bias, conventional wisdom, popular culture, urban myth, prejudice, or sectarianism. The basic summarizing statement of the essay The Ethics of Belief by the 19th century British mathematician and philosopher William Kingdon Clifford is, it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone, to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. The essay became a rallying cry for free thinkers when published in the 1870s, and has been described as a point when free thinkers grabbed the moral high ground. Clifford was himself an organizer of free thought gatherings, the driving force behind the Congress of Liberal Thinkers held in 1878. Regarding religion, free thinkers typically hold that there is insufficient evidence to support the existence of supernatural phenomena. According to the Freedom from Religion Foundation, no one can be a free thinker who demands conformity to a Bible, creed, or Messiah. To the free thinker, revelation and faith are invalid, and orthodoxy is no guarantee of truth. And free thinkers are convinced that religious claims have not withstood the tests of reason. Not only is there nothing to be gained by believing in untruth, but there is everything to lose when we sacrifice the indispensable tool of reason on the altar of superstition. Most free thinkers consider religion to be not only untrue, but harmful. Philosopher Bertrand Russell wrote the following in his 1944 essay The Value of Free Thought. What makes a free thinker is not his beliefs but the way in which he holds them. If he holds them because his elders told him, they were true when he was young, or if he holds them because if he did not he would be unhappy, his thought is not free, but if he holds them because, after careful thought he finds a balance of evidence in their favor, then his thought is free, however odd his conclusions may seem. The whole first paragraph of the essay makes it clear that a free thinker is not necessarily an atheist or an agnostic, as long as he or she satisfies this definition. The person who is free in any respect is free from something. What is the free thinker free from? To be worthy of the name, he must be free of two things, the force of tradition, and the tyranny of his own passions. No one is completely free from either, but in the measure of a man's emancipation he deserves to be called a free thinker. The term free thinker emerged towards the end of the 17th century in England to describe those who stood in opposition to the institution of the church, and the literal belief in the Bible. The beliefs of these individuals were centered on the concept that people could understand the world through consideration of nature. Such positions were formally documented for the first time in 1697 by William Molyneux in a widely publicized letter to John Locke, and more extensively in 1713, when Anthony Collins wrote his Discourse of Free Thinking, which gained substantial popularity. This essay attacks the clergy of all churches and it is a plea for deism. In France, the concept first appeared in publication in 1765 when Denis Diderot, Jean Le Rond d'Alembert, and Voltaire included an article on Liberté de Pensée in their Encyclopédie. François-Jean Lefebvre de la Barre was a young French nobleman, 
famous for having been tortured and beheaded before his body was burnt on a pyre along with Voltaire's Philosophical Dictionary. La Bar is often said to have been executed for not saluting a Roman Catholic religious procession, but the elements of the case were far more complex. In France, Lefebvre de La Barre is widely regarded a symbol of the victims of Christian religious intolerance. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Love of Learning channel to see more videos like this one. The two videos shown on the screen might interest you. Click on them to learn more.